Hello, everyone. It's Phil Lee returning with another episode of Civil War Chat. Today is uh, Wednesday, the 24th of August, 2022. And our topic today is repeal Juneteenth. Juneteenth should be repealed because the new national holiday celebrates an obscure historical incident announcing the emancipation of slaves in Texas over two months after General Robert E. Lee surrendered his Confederate Army of Northern Virginia on April 9, 1865. In truth, all American slaves were actually freed by the 13th Amendment, which was ratified on December 18, 1865, six months after Juneteenth. The Galveston uh, Military Order on June 19, 1865 is therefore less relevant. Now, the distinction is important for two reasons. But before we get into that, I want to share my screen with you. This is a copy of my um, book, The Causes of the Civil War. And I want to encourage you to buy this book because it tells you how the North decided to go to war and what their motivations were for it. Most of the books on the causes of the Civil War lay the blame all at the feet of the South and really don't look at why the North chose to fight the war. This book focuses on that. It's important that you buy this book and, and distribute it among your friends because this story will not be told by conventional publishers. They have no interest in publishing anything that fails to put all of the blame on the South. That goes for the university presses and also the commercial presses. That's just the state of our society at this time. So Causes of the Civil War is available at Amazon and all fine bookstores for $22. There's also an audio version. So you can get the audio version too to listen in your car or while you're exercising. Uh, if you'd like an autographed copy, just contact me, Phil, P-H-I-L underscore Lee, L-E-I-G-H at me, M-E dot com. Now let me continue with my narration on why we should repeal Juneteenth. First, legislatures in 10 of the 11 former Confederate states voted to ratify the 13th Amendment, ending slavery. 10 of the 11 Confederate former, former Confederate states. The solitary holdout was Mississippi, which abolished slavery in her state constitution. Moreover, and this is important, he, the applicable Southern legislatures were composed of white Southerners many of whom served in the Confederacy. This amendment passed before the carpetbag regimes of the North were put in control in the South. So it was white Southerners that voted to ratify the 13th Amendment ending, ending slavery, as of course also did the Northern states. But all except Mississippi ratified the 13th Amendment and Mississippi outlawed slavery in their state constitution. Now, nearly 70% of Southern families did not own slaves, and some of the Confederacy's most prominent leaders opposed slavery. Before siding with Virginia at the start of the war in 1861, for example, Robert E. Lee told a Lincoln advisor, Francis Blair, quote, if I owned the 4 million slaves in the South, I would sacrifice them all to the Union, close quote. The occasion for the remark was Blair's offer to give Lee command of the Union Army then forming around Washington, which Lee declined. Four years later, in January 1865, Lee urged that the Confederate government enlist slaves as volunteer soldiers, quote, without delay, close quote, understanding that they would be emancipated for such service to be followed by a, quote, general plan of emancipation, close quote, across the South. While critics often dismiss Lee's recommendation as a desperation measure, they fail to note 
that Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation two years earlier was also a desperate measure. A few weeks before the announcement, Attorney General Edward Bates noted that the reversals on the battlefield had been had so discouraged the president that Lincoln reportedly said he felt, quote, almost ready to hang himself, close quote. Lee thus prioritized Southern independence above slavery, just as Lincoln prioritized preservation of the Union over the constitutional guarantees for states' rights. Since both were motivated by military necessity, they were on the same moral ground, although only Lincoln gets any credit for the morality. That is a consequence of the winners writing the history. And Juneteenth is another consequence of the winner's perspective on history. Now, a second, the second reason it's a, the, the distinction between Juneteenth and the 13th Amendment is important is that although some Blacks fought and died heroically to win the Civil War for the Union, the vast majority of Blacks were only passive observers and beneficiaries of the war's consequences. The black soldiers in the Union Army totaled about 185,000, which was less than 5% of America's blacks at the time. Many of them were kept away from the battlefields by serving on garrison duty in nice, comfortable locations where they were out of harm's way. In contrast, the Confederacy put 1.1 million men under arms out of a population, a white population of 6 million, translating to a participation ratio of 18%, more than three times higher than the black ratio. And if you consider that half of the white population was, uh, was female, then that raises the participation ratio to 36%. Now, in sum, December 18th, not June 19th, should be celebrated as the day that America's slaves were freed. Not only did the amendment, the 13th Amendment, free more slaves, it did so more definitively than the murky military order in Galveston. Finally, it is unlikely that a single Black man participated in the ratification process for the amendment. It was therefore wholly a gift to black slaves by Americans, by white Americans, North and South. And today's blacks and their social justice warrior advocates, I and mean, even more so their social justice warrior advocates should take note of that. It was the whites that made the, the black man free. It was whites that ended slavery, not blacks. Although admittedly, there were 185,000 of them as soldiers, and some of them did fight and die heroically and bravely. Okay, that's our message for today, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.